I ended up getting caught, you know, with 31 grams of work. They ended up doing three years straight in the hole. Why, why you was on the side? Why am I inside? On the inside, is it right? God. You said 31 grams? Yeah. How do you even get some? I, can't, I know you're not going to ask you can't yeah. ask me all, but. They read it right though. That's what it says. Mr. Ivy was confined in a special housing unit for an unusually long period of time. In fact, maybe longer than any other defendant from USP Lee that the court has sentenced to new federal charges. Mr. Ivy was confined in a special housing unit for 843 days at USP Lee and then transferred to USP Big Sandy where he spent an additional 60 days in a special housing unit while waiting to be charged for his conduct. So I'm told I did 129 weeks in the shoot. Supreme. I was on the yard with Supreme. Was the same guy that ran with 50 Cent? Right. I was in Lee County with him and Big Sandy. What was he like? What was his character? He was on the yard. Mm. Okay. He had like a little damn near Supreme team in there too. Because you got the little youngsters that's, you know what I'm saying? They, yeah, but make sure you provide the weight. Officers report they found 24 pounds of cocaine inside Jerry Davis Jr.'s car earlier this month. Then they found another 50 pounds in his new Franklin home. BMF spoke about uh, oh, he's uh, about J. Rock. J. Rock, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had influence. J. Rock was pretty smooth when he came in. He came in pretty smooth. Okay. He came in on his little workout shit. You know what I'm saying? He know me. You know what I'm saying? He know. Work, I mean, like work yeah, yeah, doing his little burpees and working out. Coming in, not eating no meat, doing this little, you know, macro thing and all that type of stuff. But, you know, yeah, people cater to him. Okay. Yeah, people bring them stuff out of the kitchen. You never go in a child like that. You don't go to child. See, you know what I'm saying? And that, in the feds, is like a status. I don't go to the child hall to eat. You see, that's how, that's how our mind works. You think, I don't got to go, I ain't got to go to child. I got a lot full of shit. And that's how dudes put it, man, child. I don't know what's for child, never go. Then you got people gonna hate on that. Cause you don't never go to child. But he got to go, but he got to fly. So now you not going every day and got people bringing you shit that they don't cook to the kid and you ain't got to sit there, it's coming to you. Start to get some kind of hate. J-Rock one of them dudes though. He had people doing all that for him. But see, different. Like we used to hang around people that got less than you, you might care them a certain type of way. And when you bump into people that is equal or got just as much as you, now you gotta be the real you. So now it's about your character. Say, bro, when you first hit it, when you first get there, what was it like for you? Was it a shock? I mean, you always a little nervous about the unknown. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Anybody say they're going, doing this, they weren't scared, this and that. Not scared as far as I'm shaking, but scared about because you don't know what's going on. And a lot of times when you got a lot of guys that do stuff, I don't do this for the people I can't take back. So I don't know if this man that I'm doing something to could be on the yard before me, because I don't did it. I don't call dudes like that. Like, I don't get a job in the kitchen. And when you get all the, one thing I know, the next morning you come, you're coming to eat. You gonna come eat. And when you come eat, all your homeboys, they gonna be sitting at the table waiting on me. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm walk up on you, hey man, we had a problem in the last spot. What we trying to do, we gonna blow this one? We need to get this out of the way now. Or we gonna live in harmony, what we gonna do? Sometimes it go one way, sometimes it, you know what I'm saying? Depending on who you is, the other way. Bro, you go right, so uh, so that night you get arrested. Do you, do you ever see the streets again? Never seen them again. 20 years? 20 years. 20 years. What, what was it, at the point of your arrest, was it that serious in your mind? Man, I slept, man, listen, when I got arrested, when the people told me, offered me 10 years, I slept for a week. <laughs> I couldn't, 10 years is a lot of time when you're coming from the street, you, you can't even phantom it. 10 years, five, 10 sound like too much. So you go through your depression stages and then you're gonna go through your stage where you just gotta take it rally for what it is and take it a day at a time. You know what I'm saying? Cause at the end of the day, it's still a mind thing. At the end of the day, you still gotta have your bearings, you still gotta be focused on what's going on. You got dudes be asking you about your case. You got dudes that, that do that too. They pull up on you, ask you about your case, act like they going to medical, and be going to see them people. And debriefing on it, that's what they call debriefing. They put people in the cell with you to get information out of you, to extract information out of you by talking to you, acting like he a seller. They'll put them in the cell with you. He act like he a street dude, the homie, this and that, this when you in the county. 
and y'all get to talking about stuff y'all done did in the past, and you bring that up, and next day, you know, he got a medical call out, but all the time, he don't call the agent to tell him what y'all been talking about in the room at night. So basically undercover? Ba basically. Damn. Damn, undercover in jail. In jail. <laughs> yeah, Shit. just like in the Matrix. The, the agent's everywhere. Anybody could be an agent. It's the same thing. You feel what I'm saying? Straight regular street dude goes with his mouth, this and that, whole time you're aging. You see what I'm saying? So it's the same thing like in the Matrix. They just plug in. Say, bro, bro, which, which particular, uh, it was penitentiary, right? Right. Which particular, particular oh, yeah. oh, matter of fact, before we get to that, I gotta ask you, right? Before we get to that, so so you said they will offer you 10. Right. Um, I didn't take it. Okay. Because I'm thinking like the state. You act like you go to trial, they'll drop it so they ain't gotta spend as much money. But in the feds, they don't do that. They up it. They make you an offer, you don't take it. You got, and it's fast. If anybody been sitting, you don't sit in no kind of jail no two, three years waiting on the feds, it's immediately. So you reject the 10, what happened? When I reject the 10, they sent it back and they said, we're going to, we're going to try in 30 days. So me being me, still trying my hand, I get there. And it's dudes that I see from coming back from state prison with their prison clothes on. And I'm like, what, what y'all here for? Oh, no, no, wait. But the whole time they was there to testify against me, to say they worked for me. And they used that as a conspiracy to say how many drugs dudes buy from is called those dough. If I buy a half a brick from you and I've been doing it for two years, what they'll do is add that dope up for two years. And that's what they charge you with. You charge with selling 100 keys. So now your guideline gonna start with 100 bricks. Cause they don't accumulate it. It ain't just one you got busted with it. Nah, whatever he say he been buying from you, that's what they gonna document on their paper and that's what they gonna add up. Boy, it's a real game. <laughs> it's definitely a real Boy, it's game. it's a game for real. Definitely, yeah. definitely a real game. You go in front of the judge, you, you, on, you on trial, right? No. When I didn't take the 10, they went up to 15. Matter of fact, they went up to 188 months. And uh, once I seen them bring them dudes back from the state to testify against me, I knew I couldn't win. So now they got me locked in for the 15. I went on to take it. And they careered me out. Of course, they tried their hand, you know, as uh, far as, you know, what's up with the dude we was looking for, where we at, this and that, we'll let you go, Ooh, we'll drop your time, that type of thing. Trying their hand, and uh, I ended up getting 188 months behind it. Okay, you, you, you did 15. You got, you got sentenced to 15. I got finished. Uh, but you did 20. How did that happen? Well, when I was inside the prison, I was still hustling. You know what I'm saying? When you got a lot of time, you can't think 15, 20 years ahead. So any type of man or any type of hustler is going to try to find a way to take care of themselves without having to put pressure on their people on the street. So, of course, I'm hustling in, in prison. You know what I'm saying? I really don't want to go into the, uh, certain details on that because it might affect my livelihood or whatever. But in the feds, they had jobs and they paid you. They had what they call unicorn. Basically, you getting paid pennies to make bulletproof vests, so I might get paid $8 a month. But that's only something that I can only, you know, my hygiene, stuff like that, you know? And when you're going through that, you got people on the street behind me they went. The mom got cancer, she's sick, can't pay for her medicine. I went back to what I know how to do best at that time because at that particular time I was still young. You know what I'm saying? I didn't come into age until later on at, toward the end of my sentence. I was still young. I couldn't think five years ahead. At the time I got caught, I had five more years left. And most people can't think five years ahead. That's a long time. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the questions people ask when you talk to a female. Well, you see yourself at five years. I'm young, I don't know. I can't see where I'm at. I don't even know I'm be at the park. So in an extremely highly violent environment, like, everybody can't just sell a drugs and hustling your pen. It don't work like that. But I ended up getting caught, you know, with 31 grams of heroin. I ended up doing three years straight in the hole. Why, why you was on the side? Why I'm on the inside. On the inside, is it right? God damn, you said 31 grams? Yeah. How do you even get some? I, I know you're not going to if you can't yeah. ask me, but damn. Yeah, they read it right up. That's what it says. You know what I'm saying? Now I come to defend it. Recommending the plea agreement of 84 months. Both Mr. Ivey and the government considered when this sentence left was agreed that the particulars should be brought to the confined special housing unit. Mr. Ivey was confined in special housing unit for an unusually long period of time. In fact, maybe longer than any other defendant from USP Lee 
that the court has sentenced to, to new federal charges. Mr. Ivo was confined to special housing unit for 843 days at USP Lee and then transferred to USP Big Sandy where he spent an additional 60 days in special housing unit while waiting to be charged for his conduct. So I'm told I did 129 weeks in the shoe. And months that equals what? This, like, that years almost, is like, yeah, 31 months, almost three years. They gave me, I did a month in the shoe for every gram I had. I got caught with 31 grams, that made me do 31 months in the hole.